Hey everybody, thank you for watching Blackburn in Tech. My name is Brian. If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and click the like, subscribe button. It helps you to verify that you actually want to see this content, and it's pretty free. So, that being said, we've started this journey on setting up a firewall, a 48 firewall, and having one admin account is cool, especially if it's just like you or I running this. It's no big deal, right? But maybe we have multiple administrators, and... I don't want to, I want to be able to see who did what change, who broke what. and Or maybe I want to limit something. Maybe I have a junior network admin or somebody that I want to teach on how to do something, but I don't want to give them full control over my firewall. Well, let's jump in over on the screen and let's take a look and see on how this is set up. All right. So over here, we're just going to go ahead and log into our trusty firewall. We'll go ahead and skip that for now. And I don't like this little welcome box that often. Um, but that's a personal preference. So let's come over here and we'll go down to System, Administrators. So currently, the only one we have is this admin user here. And this is the one where we've been using to log in and make all these changes. This is the default admin, like I said, that, that's like the super admin. Um, let me go jump back over here. So that's kind of like your super admin. Um, it's your root account, if you will, your administrator account in Windows. That's like the King Kong of your network. Um, the nice part is if you want to, you can change the username on there. Um, that's one thing FortiGate lets us do. Um, but we can. It's it's easier just to create another user that has that same kind of permissions. So. Over here, we'll come over here and click this create new. Now we'll see administrator, REST API administrator. That's a different type of administrator, actually. It's pretty interesting. And SSO stands for single sign-on administrator. Um, currently, we're just creating just a regular administrator. And then what username do I want? I'm going to call this guy Bob. Because Bob is our typical admin. And he's a local user, right? And we can set up, if we had other stuff settings, but here we could. Um, password. And I'm just going to set this one very sec securely, as you guys know, on my, my demonstration here. Um, so coming down a little bit, administrator profile. This is what, what I was trying to say is that what is it that Bob's allowed to do? Admin no access. So basically, Bob can't do anything. He can't even log in. Uh, proof admin. And that one's a little bit odd. And we'll get into that one later on. That's more... If you have um, what is known as uh, virtual domains, like uh, or uh, like they they have different permissions. Uh, the super admin that's like giving them root access, and then super admin read only. So I'm going to create him as a super admin read only user. And here is where we can turn on two factor authentication if we want to. We can restrict his login. So maybe Bob, I want. I don't want him to log in from the public. Maybe I do have it up, my uh, firewall open on the internet, but I don't want Bob to be able to log in from there. Or maybe I only want him to log on from this one computer. You can do that because you specify what IP address it is. Now, this one right here restrict to the guest group permissions, and this is more um, this is more typically used so. So you have a front desk staff or somebody that's granting like temporary network access. That would be something you'd do. And what groups do they guest groups can they manage? Um, Bob's just allowed to see read only. So I went ahead and saved Bob as we can see. He's there. All right. Let me go ahead and pop me back in here. Ding. Here I am down in the corner over there. Cool. All right. So Bob's in. We're logged in as admin, so we can change anything we want. But Bob is just our read-only admin. So let's say we go ahead and log out, and let's log in as Bob. And now Bob will have an option to set up his own dashboards and stuff. He can he can make his own dashboards look nice if he wants. That's that's something cool he can do. We'll also watch this this introduction video. But can he make any change? He can't make changes on my network, right? So if he comes in here and maybe Bob's feeling mad today and he's like, you know what, that Brian guy, he's, he's always being mean to me. You know what, I, he has no, uh, we're just going to turn all this off on here. 
Anybody notice what's missing? There is no. It's just return. He cannot save any changes. So even if Bob wanted to, look, he can view it, the settings, but like he can't come in here and make changes and or do anything that would be malicious, uh, which is definitely helpful. Um, like I said, so maybe you're training somebody and you're wanting them to just be able to see stuff, but you don't want them to make changes on it. Now, let's log back in as the admin account because that, that's pretty cool, right? To be, to be honest with you, that's pretty cool, being able to say, so, yeah, you can either do stuff or you can't do stuff. But what if I want them to be able to do certain things, but not everything? Maybe I want you to be able to see the logs, but I don't want you to um, mess with anything that's very sensitive. Maybe I don't want you to mess with my networking interfaces. Or you can mess with the network interfaces, but you can't mess with this other area. So let's jump back in and take a look at that. All right, so over here, we're going to go ahead and log back in as admin. Oh, my computer decided to type random characters again. All right. So from here, let's go ahead and go back under our system. But not just under administrators here. We're going to go under admin profiles. And so we have these two profiles that are already created by default. Let's create our own. And we're going to say this. Um, let's see. New IT staff. Okay, so I want to maybe let them, I don't want them to have access to everything, obviously, right? Because if not, then that would make them a super admin, but I don't want to have them, let them have access to, okay, so I want them to be able to see the, the logs, um, see VPN stuff, see that, um, but maybe I do trust them You change network stuff, the settings, right? And I can even come in here to custom and say, what can they do? Can they run a packet capture, right? Do I want to say, okay, um, I don't want to give you access to actually change too much, but I do want to let you be able to run your own packet captures kind of thing. And this would come in handy, like I said, so maybe you have a new IT admin and you want them to be able to get a packet capture. Maybe it's your support desk staff and they're going to get the initial stuff going for you, and then it gets escalated up to senior engineering. This would be a prime way you could do that. So from here, he can do a packet capture, but maybe under VPN where we gave him read access. We, okay, so he, he can see stuff on there. Um, what about security profiles? Can I grant him different permissions? So do I want him to be able to adjust my web filter maybe? Yeah, you can adjust the web filter. So let's go ahead and save this. And then come back over here to our administrators. And we can change Bob's permissions because, okay, maybe Bob's graduated up from a uh, read-only to now I want to, I trust him to make some changes now. So let's go ahead and log in as Bob now. Let's see what can, Bob can see. Pay attention to the left-hand, yeah, pay attention to the left-hand pane to this side when we log in as Bob and see what it, see if it looks any different. Notice on there, it looks like there's a little bit less stuff that Bob can do. Let me go ahead and get me out of the way real quick. All right, so Bob doesn't have access to the, our firewall policies now, but remember we, we said he can do, under the network, he can do a packet capture. So he can come in here and run a packet capture if he wants. But he can't come in and make changes on my network interfaces, right? Um, security profiles. I said he can access my web filter settings, so... Well, he can come in here and maybe we, he's just feeling numb. We're just going to go ahead and just change some stuff just for fun. Okay, but maybe rated R content's allowed. So he comes in here and does this and presses OK. Bob just made a change on my network, right? So this is where the power of being able to have multiple administrators come into play. We just made a change as Bob on our network. And maybe I'm troubleshooting something going... Well, it was working before. What changed? And I, I don't know. And I log in the logs and see the well, admin, 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 admin made this change. Not helpful at all. 
Let's jump in the logs room now. Okay, so we granted him permission. He can see the logs. So, web filter, logs, there's nothing. Oh, let's come under events. We can see what events was changed. On web profile default, it was changed by Bob. We can come over here and see. Okay. Um, yeah, so he, he, he modified our web filter at this time. That being said, now I have something I can prove to my management team, or maybe you are the management team going, okay, well, we didn't approve for Bob to make that change. That's the importance of having multiple administrators. And as you can see, it's just that simple to log in and change what, what permissions they have. Um, typically, you don't want them to have permissions to change other permissions as far as your, like, if you don't want to make everybody a super admin, for example. That, it's like the principal of least privilege, like what we teach in everything else. You don't want to have them have the, the keys to the kingdom, but yet you want to let them have as much that they need to do their job. So maybe Bob is in charge of my content filter, my web builder. He doesn't need to be messing with my network settings. Um, he doesn't need to be messing with my firewall rules. So by restricting it down, say if this account gets compromised because Bob set his password to admin, then all of a sudden, okay, yeah, my, my content filter policy might be broken, but my network's still online. So that's the importance of this. Well, I hope this has been informative for you. I appreciate you for viewing. And if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and click that like, subscribe, like I said. It helps YouTube and helps me to figure out if people actually like this content and helps make the YouTube, YouTube algorithm, um, what do you want to say, make it more accessible to everybody. Well, thank you. Have a good day.